Hey y'all. Well, I'm headed out to my car to go see my little daddy. My little 92 year old daddy. And uh, I'm uploading as we speak. I started the uploads and then left. Um, some more lightweight videos. We've been doing some pretty heavy duty videos about the um, essential doctrines of Christianity. And um, I think I've listed all the, what I would say the essentials are. They're still very important doctrines. Doctrines, by the way, are just core beliefs of a, um, of a faith base. Every faith has them. There are doctrines that Muslims follow. There are doctrines that Jews follow. There are doctrines that Hindus follow. There's doctrines that Buddhists, who say they're not a religion. We're not going there right now, but anyway. They follow. And the core beliefs of Christianity are what we call the doctrines. And there are some essential doctrines that all denominations agree on that say this makes you a Christian if you believe this. And then there's some important doctrines, meaning these are important things about our faith. Um, very important, not necessarily as essential. And so we still can go over those. But uh, in the meantime of all that, I won't say it's heavy, it's just more serious. Let's face it, it's more serious. Y'all got the sun behind me, so that don't work. Ooh, it's bright. I'm glad when the sun's bright, except when it's hot. I don't like to be hot. Being hot makes me sick at my stomach, y'all. I don't know why that is. Um, but anyway, oh look, there's my little lone car. Hey, little car. Hey, Pearl Ann. Her name's Pearl Ann. I named her. <clears throat> anyway, there's people in the woods walking. There's trails that are actually in our woods. So at first I was like, well, that's alarming. There's people in the woods, but they're walking. Look, see them? Can you see them? Let me see if you can see them, see them. They may not appreciate that I'm zooming in on them. Where are they? I can't see. Hold on. You see how people are walking through our woods? Okay, now you see. And now you don't. Let me zoom out so that you don't have a picture up my nose. Oh, you do anyway. <laughs> okay. So, oh, my sunglasses transitioned. I've got transition on my sunglasses. Okay, so um, I thought I zoomed all the way out. It looks like I zoomed all the way in. Um, so what do I want to talk about today? Well, I've been, what I've been doing is uploading some days, some lighter weight stuff, like, um, stuff about, let me zoom out a little, y'all. It's just, it's just too much. <laughs> I get my, my badge off, my safety belt on. Um, I did some, um, What's in my bag? Two videos on that, which was fun. Just it, basically, I was using my clover sack to change over, and I went ahead and filmed what was in it. Um, then I also did some uh, Bass Pro Shop uh, hauls because uh, we know we love to do haul videos, uh, and I love Bass Pro. I really do, and you'll see that in the video. So go look at that. And then um, also, um, I'm uploading a get ready with me that is again using it cosmetics i really do use them a lot i like them um i also got a, a code um i'm gonna do a video coming up about the sigma brushes i'm still not an affiliate i need to go tonight and become an affiliate but they gave me a code like people who get affiliate codes for me to give out to others to use so i need to do a video about their brushes and what i should do is maybe the 10 essential brushes or something like that or what however many I'll, I'll look maybe i can get it down from that and i would recommend i like it cosmetics brushes but i recommend sigma beauty brushes and so i will um and i don't know that i'd buy a whole set because i don't know that i use every one of the brushes in the set but there are some that i cannot live without so i will i mean i've shown you how to actually use your fingers the pinky for inner and there this i've showed you before how to use your fingers as brushes so if you're interested in that again i'll show you again so comment below but anyway so i've just done some fun videos and then today i was thinking about um some of the things that people write about things that you're going through and i just wanted to talk to y'all about um 
I guess this is a devotion video on peace. And um, I was going to tell you go to John uh, 14, verse 27, and then I was going to tell you to go to John 20, 19. But I really think you ought to just read the whole book of John. I'm not kidding around. I think that is one of the most wholesome, helpful things you can do in your whole life. G Jesus apparently had a best friend. It seemed to be John. Um, this is... Uh, John the the disciple. This is not John the Baptist, but uh, I want you to go and read the book of John. If you don't have time for that right now, go and read the whole book of uh, or chapter John 14 and John 20. If you don't have time for that, at least read John 14, 27, and John 20, 19. Um, but you know, I've been talking to people, and and they talk about the things that they want in this world, uh, whether it's material things or health or finance or whatever it is, and they get those things, and they still don't have peace. Have you ever, have you ever found that to be true? They still don't have peace. And um, and then when I talk to them about Jesus Christ and they investigate Him, they begin to find peace. And you know, one of the first things I tell them is go read the Book of John. Why? Because that is where I really got to know Jesus. Um. I was uh, a believer in God the Father before I had heard of the Holy Spirit, but I didn't really get it when I was younger. And it wasn't until I read the book of John that I really understood Jesus Christ and that He was God and that that was something I had missed. I understood the role of the Holy Spirit better. I understood the role of the Son, the role of the Father, and the fact that all three of them were, in fact, God. Um, and that alone, because He is the Prince of Peace, gave me peace. Um, he is our peace. Um, Jesus told the disciples, and he's also telling us, um, he says, uh, I'm telling you these things while I'm still with you, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, so he's our advocate, he will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything I've told you. So he's an advocate of Jesus Christ, and he works on behalf of him for us. So he's out. He's our He's our teacher. He's our comforter. Um, he's our convictor. He, he is God. And he lives within us when we ask him to. Uh, it is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit. I am leaving you with a gift. That's what Jesus says. Guess what the gift is? If Jesus Christ could leave you any gift, what would you really want it to be in this world? Would it be money, fame, finances, fortune, good health? All the things that are fleeting, really. What about what he did leave us as a gift? He says, I'm leaving you peace of mind and heart. Have you ever had peace in your heart about something? Wasn't life just better? What about peace of mind that you didn't have to worry? You can have everything else, but if you do not have peace in your mind and peace in your heart and soul, there is nothing that helps nothing you'll just keep seeking something until you have that and that peace only comes from God um, and he says that he, this peace that he gives you the world can't give you so he's very clear we're done with that subject in the sense that you can't get peace from this world you cannot nothing you do will ever be enough you'll have that continual lust for more because nothing will ever be the round stud that goes in the round hole. Instead, it will be a round stud going in a square hole. It just won't fill. It won't work. Only Jesus works. Only Jesus can give that peace. The world can't give that kind of peace. Um, and he reminds us, so don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. In John 20, 19, he says, peace be with you. And um, he also reminds us in John 14 that I, I'm going, but when I go, I'm going to send another. He tells us, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I personally am going to come back and take you to be with me where I am. Have peace. You can have all your hope in Jesus Christ. You can have peace in Jesus Christ. No matter what happens here, don't focus on the waves. Focus on he who made the waves, who can walk on the waves, and he can make you walk on the waves. I know it's hard. I know it's real hard because the world looks pretty real, but there's something more real in this world. And I'm not talking about X factors or, oh, what was Ken o Reeves in that, you know, it appears to be the world's really all just a bunch of ones and O's. Yeah, ones and O's are signals and they do things in music and electronics, all that sort of thing, but that's just codes. 
it called that are instructions to electronics to work. It's not an alternate world. Matter of fact, all of that God made. He made the ones and the O's and the electricity. He made everything. I know some of you are going to argue with me because you've argued with me before that you don't believe that he did. And that's okay. We can have that conversation. Do it nicely. Say it nicely. But we can have that conversation, even a passionate conversation. Just don't name call and don't be ugly about it. And we can have that conversation. Um, but Jesus reminds us that if we really love him, We'd be happy that he's going to the Father because when he goes to the Father, he's going to send another. And that he will be able to do, that God will be able to do more in us and the Holy Spirit than Jesus' ministry. Now, we're not talking about what he did on the cross, did in the flesh, because he was one person, one human being. Now, what he did on the cross, none of us can do. None of our works, none of our good works can accomplish what he did. Only he could accomplish what he accomplished. But uh, the Holy Spirit can be in millions of people at one time Jesus was one actual flesh person and that's what he meant by that he says greater works will you do than I did when the Holy Spirit's in you in other words more of them more works and uh, ongoing ongoing because he can work in us when he is spirit and not just a human being he did one incredible work while he was here in the flesh and took on blood so he could bleed and that was the work of the cross and only he could have done that sacrifice because only he is perfect we could not do that we still can't do that it takes jesus christ to get forgiveness for our sins and if you don't think you need forgiveness just look at yourself in the mirror and sometime and say hmm have i been good no you're not good no i'm not good uh, no one is but god no one is good but God, and Jesus is God, so he is good, and therefore his sacrifice was good enough to save us from our sins. Why? Because we were made good by God, but when we sinned, that, and he gave us, when he made us, he put life in our blood, and when we sinned, that sin equals death, so to get life back, he has to have blood. That's how he made us. That's how he set it all up. And so there had to be a blood sacrifice that if you're going to be bad, then you've got to uh, have a good positive negative, y'all. Do you get that? I mean, every even science works that way. Keys work that way in a hole. Um, positive and negative ions. I mean, everything... God's saying, look, if you're going to have this, then you have to have that. If you are going to commit sin, then you have got to have a sacrifice. If you are going to be bad, then you've got to have something greater than bad to make you good again. And that is what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Now, he still can do good works through us. So, and what's the main good work? Telling people about him. And that's what we can do in the millions because he can live inside of each and every one of us physically, spiritually. And we can do that work. So, I got to go, y'all, because I'm driving, so I need to get off this, um, this, what am I trying to say, camera. Love y'all, bye!